<laughs> What's up, everybody? It's another episode of Big Bro Podcast. Before we get started, I want to say thank you so much to everybody who's been listening. Um, every one of my subscribers, I don't even know what the number is at. Um, you know, I don't have millions. Like, I just saw my man, uh, Jake Paul, doing his thing. You know, I don't have a million subscribers like him, but every single one of y'all, I love y'all, I appreciate y'all, and I'm going to keep doing this uh, because I think it's important for us to build. I think it's important to have a big brother voice out in the world, man. So I thank y'all. I appreciate you. Anybody who's listening to this for the first time, if you could do me a favor and click subscribe on it so you can keep up with what we got going on and you get some alerts whenever I post new videos. All right. All right, so listen, it's the holiday season, man. It is also No Shave November, so for anybody who's doing their thing, yo, check check out my beard journey, man. Check this out. Look at that. Look at that. This is what I would, I would probably classify this as like a B. I think I'm at level B, you know what I mean? I'm past the A, I'm at B, or like a level two. You know, I got a full, firm shape going on and some thickness going on. I'll probably take it to about a three. We'll see where it go, maybe more. But I'm feeling good, man. I love I love where it's going. I love where it's headed. Shout out to the Black Gent, the Black Gentleman Grooming Company who got me together, man. I finally found the products I love, the products that make me feel good and make me smell good. You know what I'm saying? So I can come in here and chop it up with y'all and feel myself. You know what I'm saying? I feel like my look is popping, you know? Represent for all the salt and pepper dudes out there. Yeah, we're all my gray-headed cats, man. What's up, man? Hall of Famers. Yeah. So listen, man. This is the holiday season, man. You know, with Thanksgiving, Christmas, you hear a lot of traditional stories. You know what I mean? You're going to hear a lot. You're going to see a lot of things on TV. You're going to hear a lot of the same stories. You're going to hear a lot of the same music. But what I want to do is provide a contrast to that, man. We done heard all of that. And that's all cool. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you something new, man. I'm going to give you something new. You know what I'm saying? Instead of learning about the pilgrims, you know, kicking the uh, the blankets with, with sickness and disease to the Native Americans, you know what I mean? Or hiding that and talking about something else with that turkey dinner and all of that good stuff. We're going to talk about um, some, some things that we may not hear about, right? What I call the black future, you know? You know, back in school, sometimes our teacher would say, hey, run off to the library, grab a book, you know, and, and do a quick little report on somebody. Do a report, you know, for, for kids that look like me. You know, Martin Luther King, uh, Jackie Robinson, Hank Aaron, uh, Jesse Owens. You know, we had we had the go tos, man, and much love to them. You know, we studied them through and through. There were some people in our and you know, legendary figures that wasn't really available. There were some legendary figures that, you know, you weren't gonna find Malcolm X in there. You know what I'm saying? You you wasn't gonna find Brother Malcolm. You probably wasn't gonna find Marcus Garvey nowhere either. You know what I mean? Those kind of figures are a little too black, a little too strong. But for us, man, what would it have been like if we would have learned that? You know, at a young age, to go to school and learn all about Malcolm. You know, I went home and my big brother taught me about it. You know what I'm saying? I saw the autobiography of Malcolm sitting on the bed, picked it up and read it for myself. You know, but what if we would have in school learned about Marcus Garvey? Had 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 little uh little little little, little exercises where a couple of the kids could be Garveyites. You know what I mean? Get that pride going on. So that's what we're going to do. Today, we're going to do a feature on an important black figure. Shout it out. Yo, big ups to my man, Freddie Figures. Yeah, if you haven't heard of him, I suggest after you watch this video, go Google him. Go Google him and go Google his products, man. Freddie Figures, if you don't know who he is, you're talking about an entrepreneur. You're talking about inventor. You're talking about a tech giant right and he's only 32 years old yeah so if you don't know who he is i really want you to go take a look at him but we're gonna go over his life a little bit real quick so so one of the years that i like to point to a lot in this in, the, in my books in my music is 1988 1988 was a huge turning point for a lot in black culture right 1988 when they flipped like my man chuck d said to 1989 that's the year Freddie Figures was born, right? Freddie Figures was born in a rural area in Florida. His mother, through whatever issues she was struggling with, through whatever battles and demons she was trying to overcome, she left him as a newborn in a dumpster. Man, think about that. This man's life began when he's supposed to be getting rocked in a cradle. He was thrown in a dumpster. 
I know we've all seen movies. We've seen, you know, we all know Tupac's Brenda's got a baby. So we know this is not something that's, you know, completely unheard of. It's way more common than we wish it would be. But that was the beginning of Fred Figure's life, right? So people find him in this dumpster. Police get him. He has to be hospitalized so his injuries can be treated, right? Finally, he goes in that foster care and he gets placed into a foster home. So the people that took him in, the Figures family, that's F-I-G-G-E-R-S. It's probably a name you're gonna know or your children are gonna know as time moves forward, right? But we chopping it up about him right now. So he goes to live with the Figures family, tries to start a normal life. Kids are teasing them, calling him dumpster baby. Now how they got that information, I don't know. But man, can you imagine? That's how your life started. Now you finally get a family who takes you in. You try to go to school and the kids are calling you dumpster baby. That's the way you're being treated in school, right? Crazy. So at the age of nine, and I think this is something a lot of people can relate to. I know I can relate to it. At the age of nine, his father bought him a broken computer. It was a 1989 Macintosh. A lot of people may not even know Macintosh computer, man. But that's how Apple got started. You know what I mean? 1989 broken thing pay $25 for it at thrift store, right? Brings it home, broken computer. Freddie Figure starts piecing this thing together, right? He, his father got it because he was a maintenance worker at Florida State University. He figured, hey, my newly adopted son, man, he likes, to, he likes to tinker with stuff. Let me cop him this, bring it home. Big ups to that, man, because one of the things, sometimes we, you never know how you fuel in a child's dream. You know, I've worked in the tech space for 20 years now and I got started from when I was a child when my father bought me my first computer so big ups to that man you never know the kind of seeds you plant when you do something like that for your kid man and look at what his father was doing his father actually bought him a broken one it's like all probably all they could afford probably all they could afford but he bought it for him 25 bucks and look at how that investment paid off yeah so man all y'all parents out there man you never know Phantom flames, man. Phantom flames. And try not to say and use words that are, that'll are squash a kid's dream, man. Just because it may not fit with what you have for them. We have to remember, man, we are not carpenters. We're not building a child when we raise them. We're gardeners. We give them the water. We give them the food. We give them the shelter. We give them the right environment. And whatever grows, we love it. You don't know what's going to grow. You don't know what shape or color, what's going to look like, right? So if their dreams or their passions may not look like what we think is something viable, try not to squash it. Don't use words like low. Don't be like, you know, that little thing you like to get into. Don't, don't do that. That's a parenting don't. Please, I'm asking y'all, don't do that to your kids, man. Right? So his father, Nathan, figures, man, he copped this computer. He figured it'll probably help keep him out of trouble. He could tinker with it at home. Freddie takes this thing home and pulls it all apart. Uh, throwing pieces, pieces it back together, pull it apart again piece it back together, take it apart again, several times, over and over, man. And he figured out how to get the power on when he installed some new components that he found from other things, right? So he might take like a radio and pat little pieces and patch it in there. How do you still get the power to work? So he's reverse engineering this thing to try to figure out how can I change it and adapt it and still make it work. Fully understand how it works, right? And the thing I love about it, man, when I was doing the research on this, Freddie said he still has that computer to this day. Still has it to this day. That's powerful. That's really powerful, man. So you move forward, man. He got good at tinkering. He got good at tinkering with computers, man. And check this out, man. By the time he was 13 years old, the city of Quincy, Florida, where he was living, hired him to start fixing computers, man. For a lot of people of us that work in IT, that's our first gig, right? Especially back in those days when a lot of people were afraid of computers, man. If you didn't have that fear, People would pay you to step in and figure it out, man, tinker with it, right? And he did this for a couple of years to the point where by the time he was 15, he started his own company, Figures Technology, where he would take all the people around the neighborhood, man, if they needed somebody to fix their computers, if they needed somewhere to store their files, he was the man to come to. He had started his Figures Computer Company already, 15 years old, based on that little spark, that little piece of technology that gave him the thing to tinker with. So by the time he was 17, man, he built up to where he got 150 clients. My man is making some decent money and he decides to use that money to invest back in himself, back in his own ideas. So my man starts to tinker with a new thing, right? 
his father, the first person to invest in him, the first person to help him out, the person who showed him, who gave him a home after he was left in a dumpster. His father started to develop Alzheimer's and dementia, right? So he starts to figure, I could use my knowledge of technology to help out here. He designed a GPS device to go into his shoe, his father's shoe, so that when his father would wander off or couldn't be found, he could find him. Now imagine that. He used his knowledge of technology to help out in the one area that meant the most to him, right? And something that was really hitting him in the heart, he used it for that. You know, his father suffered from Alzheimer's disease, so sometimes he would wander off and get confused, as is common with people who suffer from, from Alzheimer's disease. So this device that he created was a GPS to go into his father's shoe. But check this out, y'all. Not only did it keep up with his father's movements, but it allowed him to talk to his father through his shoe. Come on, man. I know anybody who grew up back when I did, remember Get Smart, when they used to be like, hey, he had the phone in his shoe. You know, that seemed like something that was crazy, it was out there, it was ridiculous. This dude made it happen as a teenager to look out for his father, man. How, I mean, when you do something like that, you know something big is about to happen, right? And unfortunately, his father passed away in 2014, not long after he created that device. But check this, using the money that he earned from that shoe device, that smart shoe device, he was able to start Figures Communication. That brings us up to right now. So what is Figures Communication? Listen, I first got hip to my man because my man sells his own cell phone and cell phone service, right? I'm real big into supporting black owned. So I was looking around, y'all know I had videos about it. I was like, man, I wanna find my own, where's a black owned sneaker company? You know, I just couldn't find one. So I was looking and looking and looking and finally I found one. And I was like, what about a black owned cell phone company? Do they even exist? And I found that there was one and my man is legit. And that's how I found out about Freddy Figures, right? He has a phone called the F3. It is state of the art. It is really dope. A lot of people have it. The service is dope. You know, it's overseas. It's in America. It is legit. It is not a little company. You know what I mean? My man is doing his thing. And it all started from when his father bought him that broken computer and he was able to piece it back together, right? And I love this. I love this. And the main reason why I wanted to do a profile on this dude, because like I said, this my man's 32. He's a multimillionaire. My man is a power broker in the world of technology right now. The Figures Communication Company and the F3 phone and his phone service, his 5G phone service, they're doing numbers. They're a serious business. But check this out. Not only does he do that, my man sells a blood glucose meter for people with diabetes. My man is still developing technology that helps people, specifically in the ways that really impact people of color and our families. And that really hit home for me. I was like, man, I gotta do something on this dude. I gotta let my young lions know who this dude is. So if you have not heard of Freddy Figures, go Google this dude. Do your Googles, man, I'm telling you, please. You know, a lot of us in this election season, you know, one of the things I saw on social media a lot was a lot of people saying, hey, think for yourself, be a free thinker. Well, listen, that extends past who you vote for. Be a free thinker in how you think about everything. Sprint is not the only cell phone company. Apple is not the only cell phone that's dope. That's dope. There are other options out there, even black owned options. And they have stories behind them that just might inspire you. Yeah, yeah. So that's our profile, man. That's our profile for this month, man. Go look this dude up, man. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up yourself, man. You know, thank you again for joining me in the family room, man, to chop it up. Yo, and if y'all know more about my man, Freddie Figures, or some other people that might be similar to him, hit me up in the comments, man. Yo, and check out my description, man, for all of my sponsors. If you really want to get your beard right, I'm telling you, you got to hit up the Black Gentleman Grooming Company, man. That's what's up, man. Yo, I love y'all, man. I love y'all. Thanks for chilling with me. Chill with me again on my next one, man. I told you I'm gonna go over the most important rap album of all time. The one album that everybody needs to know right now. That's coming up on my next video, man. I love y'all, man. One.